these days there are lots of treatments out there for depression. Today we'll look at one in particular that might even surprise you. Is it really true that an antidepressant could help you lose weight? All of that and more right after the title card. Hello folks, and welcome to this informational video on citalopram, one of the many antidepressants out there. My name is Patrick, and I'll be your presenter for this video. This video has mainly two parts. The first part's going to be patient-focused. We're going to answer questions like, how do I take citalopram, or what can I expect while on citalopram? The second part is going to be a more deep dive, a nuanced take into the nitty-gritty details. It's more geared towards professionals. As always, if you are a patient taking citalopram or needing to seek out therapy for depression, consult your healthcare professionals before making any decision. They're likely to know more about your situation than, say, I will. I'm probably not going to read the comments anyway. Right then, let's start with the basics. Citalopram is also known as Celexa, not to be confused with everyone's favorite Amazon-powered digital assistant, and it comes as tablets these days. They used to come as a liquid solution as well, but that's since been discontinued. Citalopram is mainly used in depression, and on screen now is what you might expect the bottle or pills to look like, at least for the brand name. Before starting citalopram, it's important to have a conversation with your doctor or prescriber about uh, these things in particular, namely your current medications, your supplements or list of vitamins that you take every day, uh, your history of antidepressant therapy so far if you're already on that, liver or kidney problems that you might have, those are relevant as well, your current or past health conditions, and if you are pregnant or planning to become pregnant or are breastfeeding. All of these aspects can impact how safe it is for you to take citalopram, so make sure to bring those up if that's relevant. So, assuming you, you've got a typical prescription for citalopram, let's go over how to take it. This is a relatively simple medication most of the time. You will typically take it once a day, at the same time every day, by mouth, with or without food. Now, if you do miss a dose, it's not the end of the world. If you manage to remember it in time, then you can go ahead and take it, unless it's almost time for your next dose. I can't give you any exact numbers on how soon or how long that is, but regardless, don't double dose to make up for a missed one. Just resume your dosing schedule as normal. As for storage recommendations, we're going to fall back on an old favorite, the cool dry place. Uh, this is going to be anywhere around room temperature, that's defined as 77 degrees Fahrenheit or 25 degrees Celsius. We recommend storing it with the bottle closed and avoiding moisture, the bathroom is notorious for a moisture-laden place, so try to avoid that if possible, and keep it, of course, out of the reach of children. Now, of course, everything has side effects, and citalopram is no different. As the old adage goes, the dose makes the poison. So on screen now is a list of several of them. You might expect some nausea, dry breath, abdominal pain, or sexual problems. As for other things to know, citalopram is actually good for weight loss if that's relevant to you. Make sure to discuss that with your doctor if that's something that you might want to avoid. It's also worth noting that citalopram might take between 4 and 8 weeks to realize the full effect of the dose that you're currently on, so expect to check in with your prescriber every 4 to 8 weeks every time that you start or change the dose of citalopram. It's also worth noting that it might make you a little drowsy while you're on the medication, so take caution in driving or operating machinery before you realize how it, this drug affects you in particular. Alright, now on to some more serious things to consider. If you are taking citalopram and you find yourself having thoughts of self-harm, have hallucinations, agitation, or muscle twitching, those are all signs of a condition called serotonin syndrome, if you feel chest pain or have a fast heartbeat all of a sudden, or if you have an allergic reaction to the medication, these are all situations that you should get medical help right away. Besides those emergency situations, there are other serious points to consider here. If you are taking aspirin or taking NSAIDs like Advil or ibuprofen for your various conditions, it's worth noting that the bleed risk associated with those medications stacks with the bleed risk associated with citalopram, so take heed if that is particularly of importance to you. Another thing is that citalopram does cause withdrawal if you stop taking it suddenly, so if you want to get off citalopram in the future, Please, talk with your healthcare professional, uh, your prescriber, to help taper the dose and get off of it gradually so that withdrawal doesn't occur. 
Lastly, you might be taking St. John's wort to help improve your mood, and while you would think this would be a good thing to synergize them together, it turns out that taking St. John's wort alongside citalopram has an increased risk for that condition known as serotonin syndrome that I talked about earlier. So it is highly, highly recommended to avoid St. John's wort while taking citalopram. Now that we've gone over all of that, on screen now is a condensed summary of what you need to know as a patient. This is a good time to take a screenshot for personal reference. And that's the end of part one, so if you're a patient and you want to learn more, please talk with your health professional first. The next section might not be as understandable, especially if you don't have a medical or a science degree. For the rest of you though, let's move on. Functionally and formally, Citalopram is classified as an SSRI, or Selective Serotonin Reuptake Inhibitor. Its mechanism of action is shared with its class, which is the inhibition of neuronal reuptake of serotonin, or 5-HT as it's commonly abbreviated, in the central nervous system. This class in particular targets the serotonin transporters located next to the synaptic cleft. On screen now is a graphic of the molecular structure of citalopram as it's shown in the FDA official label. For citalopram, the only FDA use is depression. Off-label, you might see it used in OCD, panic disorder, postmenopausal flushing, and even premenstrual dysphoric disorder, but other than that, depression is the only on-label use. Citalopram is no stranger to side effects, most of which can be listed on screen now. Nausea, dry mouth, abdominal pain, decreased libido, constipation, diarrhea, dizziness, the works. And of course, sedation and somnolence, hence the uh, driving and operating machinery warning. Citalopram's safety profile carries considerable cardiac risk, especially with that QT prolongation in play. There's also warnings for suicidal thoughts or mood worsening, that's part of the black box warning I'll retouch on later, and of course the ever-present bugbear of the class, serotonin syndrome. Uh, other highlights of the warnings include angle closure glaucoma in those predisposed to it, and in pregnancy, patients taking citalopram have had, uh, found to have infants with pulmonary hypertension, so there's a risk-benefit conversation to be had there. Some notable pharmacokinetic and pharmacodynamic considerations for citalopram include the fact that it is associated with an increased bleed risk, especially when administered with things like aspirin or NSAIDs. This is why it was touched on in the patient section. Another thing to look out for with citalopram is hyponatremia. Hypo, of course, meaning low, natri, referring to sodium, and emia, meaning presence in blood. If you suspect low sodium presence in blood, go ahead and get those lab tests ordered and see what's going on inside those metabolic panels and adjust as necessary. Lastly, it's worth considering that citalopram is a 3A4 and CYP2C19 substrate. 2C19 in particular is going to be affected a lot more and will probably show up in your drug interaction checkers. As for contraindications, citalopram is contraindicated with concomitant MAOI use. If you do plan on switching your patients off of MAOIs, there is a 14-day washout period before uh, starting citalopram. Another uh, contraindication is the concomitant use of pemozide, uh, linazolid, or IV methylene blue. And, of course, as with everything, allergic hypersensitivity is implied. Finally, we go to the black box warning for citalopram, and that is the increased suicide risk, especially in patients less than 24 years of age. Uh, all patients, of course, should be monitored for this, but the black box warning does mention this specifically. All right, onwards to dosing. For the initial dose, it's going to be 20 milligrams per day, and then it's going to be titrated up to a maximum of 40 milligrams per day, with a titration rate not to exceed 20 milligrams per week. Find whatever dose works for your patient. This is available in 10, 20, or 40 milligram tablets. For special populations, 20 milligrams per day is going to be the absolute maximum recommended. This includes if you're older than 60, you are a 2C19 poor metabolizer, or if you are taking concomitant 2C19 inhibitors. Efficacy monitoring for citalopram falls in line with what we have in the guidelines. This is going to be that 4-8 to eight week window after changing the dose or starting them on citalopram. As for safety, we're going to look at sodium levels to watch out for that hyponatremia, bone mineral density if your patient is at risk, 
uh, ECG, especially if you have multiple agents uh, with QT prolongation in play. Weight, uh, of course, because the uh, associated weight loss with citalopram is present. And, of course, in the black box warning, the worsening of depression or suicidality. So, considering all of that, where do we find citalopram in the guidelines? Well, according to the APA, it is comparable with other agents in its class and across classes, so it's not really favored or discouraged either. It's kind of a neutral pick. So, because of this, here are my takeaways. This might work, or it might not. Citalopram is not favored over any other agent in particular, so literally the treatment algorithm is to just pick any agent that seems suitable and fitting for your patient, try it for four to eight weeks and see if they want to raise the dose or switch to another one, or add another one. Uh, whatever you do, start low and slow with citalopram. There's no rush as the medication's effects do take time to realize. Plus, uh, when choosing a medication for your patient, citalopram is one of the medications uh, in depression treatment that can cause weight loss. So for some, that might be a happy side effect, and for others, that might push them further into dangerous territory. So regardless, pick something that's right for your patient when prescribing citalopram. And for this video, that's all for now. Thanks for watching. This video was recorded in January 2022 and reflects the current state of knowledge we have regarding the medication at this time. All of the information in this video was pulled from the official FDA label for citalopram, available online via Daily Med. My name has been Patrick, and regardless if you're a patient or a prescriber or any other healthcare professional, take care of yourselves out there. Thanks for watching.